Yes, indeed. Uh, we we had, you know, it's the first time we casted that first map together, and we got double OT. I think yeah. that's, a, that's a pretty st strong track record already. Second map's going to be a mirage. How, what do you, how do you feel? I think so. so Maui said they're playing, you know, a top ten team in the world. And yeah. I feel like yesterday I would have said, yeah. So what? Like OG weren't playing that well, but now I'm not so sure. I think they look way more focused. I actually quite like that map, even in double OT. Um, OG looked like a scary team at the moment. Yeah, we had a lot of chaos going on. We had that yes. early sort of back and forth when we went to the second half, and I expect that chaos will ensue. I, I echo a lot of the same points that, that Maui made about just how important Woxic and Mezzi are going to be for this, but they're starting the CT side, so... They do have the kit on Floppy, some utility available as well for the C9 side. But OG, they're already postured up towards that A site. The smoke towards window as well will deny some information. They do have three players close enough though. They only have one smoke though, Michael, to try and to try and you know get onto the bomb site. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to block all the USPs, isn't it? Yeah, they got a P250 on Isa though. And he was being uh it's actually pretty good on that map as well, though. I think he called him out many, many times, but uh, he did do some uh, some good shooting nonetheless. Floppy not connecting with the first volley. Woxic also falling back. They might be worried that they're going to get flashed and just run down. And look at Isra just up here, spotting out to see if he could find someone. S attack with a very important kill. MBK is oh. hunting him. How is he not dying? And finally, it's going to be over for him. A nice shot from Valda. He'll clean it up and take over that jungle. And now it's a three on three, but the bomb is down. A smoke and a kit available on Floppy, but they're being flanked from CT. Low HP, like you'd mentioned, and Cloud9 trying to get themselves on the defuse. But Mezzi, Woxic, they're taking the fights outright, and now they'll commit to it. Alexi, a one on three. He gets the first, but they're on the bomb, and he hasn't quite realized in time. Cloud9 will steal it away from Alexi. Didn't really have much of an opportunity. The smoke just ob obscuring too much. Floppy was low enough that I think he could have killed him with one bullet. Yeah. But yes, he didn't even think about it though. No, and how is he supposed to know? I mean, you you have to you have to worry about the forward player at that point in time. What a strange round, but it does go the way of Cloud Nine. It's so ridiculous that MBK doesn't get that kill. I know. And the <laughs> fact that the the rotationary player is just like, what is what is going on over here? I'm putting an end to this right now. That's so messed up. Do you think they do you think get a, sh a shot here, Cloud9, on, on Mirage, or do you think they needed to win that nuke map? I, I definitely don't think that the performance we saw from Alexi B is going to be sustainable in this right. map in particular, just because I don't think you're you're going to give as many pivotal positions. And especially, I think I think Cloud9 are going to take a few more risks. And, well, we're actually seeing one of them right now. Mezzi's pushed through towards the B apartments, so they can start leaning towards the A-sided stack. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. I really like. Don't have to do it all the time, but some of these aggressive pushes on the CT side is always fun to see. Alex, thinking about it a little bit. He's got some backup there, so it's not a huge risk for him to get in there. Bomb is over at ramp. Could be a cool, you know, collapse onto this bomb side. And OG are pretty well equipped for it, so I think a lot maybe just come down to who gets the first kill at this point in time. Because again, if it's if it's floppy here, then it'll at least open up the main part of it. But if it's in the window. Uh, you know, suddenly Floppy is, is actually in a much worse position, so we'll find out right about now. Smoke's going up as well, 40 seconds, and they're starting to make their way out. Floppy just looking for that swing, but it's going to be Isa and Alexi B to both get a kill. And yeah, Floppy getting shot at the back all of a sudden. It's a two on three. Oh, another player in the connector as well. Alex going to make his way right past. Alexi's still not emerging from that, trying to be that hidden ele element. A snake in the grass, and Alex... Oh, wait, as that smoke fades, still going to be challenging initially, but Alexi finds the timing. Alex not prepared, and that's going to cancel things here from Mezzi. He was looking for the flank. That opportunity could certainly have arisen, but now losing a teammate, not going to be possible. An equalizing round for OG. They topple it back after losing the pistol. Yeah, that was huge. I'd really love to see how they got the, the first two opening frags there, because it, it looked like both window players rotated in towards connector and just got slaughtered there. And that really, I mean, that was amazing for the people coming out of ramp. The, they had the bomb and everything, so so much space clearing and attention being taken away just by getting uh, that part done. Messi not going to find a fight at the end either, but OG just straight win the second round. So it's become a very common thing these days, so I guess we shouldn't be that surprised. And I think the reaction you sometimes see teams go for when there isn't just a standard execute like this is that they'll just bomb a flash through towards the connector from CT spawn. Yeah. Just to just try and omit that timing, make sure that it's not just two sets of fights for, for control. 
But th these are th these are the things that Cloud9 will look to as protocols for the future. Because I mean, how much time can you really prepare for all of these ifs and buts and different scenarios? I mean, I think it was Potter that brought it up on the desk. Just the fact that the meta has changed so much since when Alex was last in-game leading. So getting up to speed with the timings and yeah. some of the rotations. Certainly a lot to digest. Yes, it is. They, they, I mean, you're right. They haven't had much time. Although famously, obviously, you know, Henry was saying, that's not something that's that not we're going to use. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to go for it anyway. So, you know, I, I definitely appreciate that. And... Listen, what was the what's the second map they played last time that was so close? Um, overpass. Yeah, overpass. That could have been a winnable map. This one was a double OT. It's kind of speak for itself. I agree. It would be kind of gut wrenching, wouldn't it, if they lost this map as well? And you say, oh, well, Cloud9 did nothing. Yeah, at, they just know. bombed out. And you think like, yeah, but but not quite, right? I mean, that's not that wouldn't quite be accurate, mm. even if uh, technically that is what's going to happen. <laughs> so, well, they'll they'll try and avoid going 0 and 4 overall best they can, but see if they can overturn this one. Messi once again aggressive towards the apartments, and Woxic's going to be put in a pretty dicey situation. Alex does come in with a smoke, so that may buy him a bit more room, make sure that short isn't as big of an issue, but now losing Alex, Woxic is the only man that can really contest the site, but he does well. One kill found, and around the corner there's another, a potential to be found, and the time is ticking low here for OG. Woxic is navigating the site like a madman, but OG do get a handle on things. <laughs> he was so hard to find. I was getting worried about the time. I was thinking, not o not already. It's a game of cat and mouse sports. Yeah, it really, really was, wasn't it? <laughs> Listen, that's that's definitely not bad. Uh, apart from the kill that he got up there, right? The fact that he sees a second player, you can almost tell that OG even are thinking, well, we have to go, right? Like, yeah. we've already been spotted. There's no messing around here. Let's just do it. So, um, but they win the round. That's all that really matters. Stack on the A bomb site for some creative plays. Double, double Triple peak. boost. Yeah. I guess it is. Oh. Just not how yeah, you normally not, think Yeah, not how you normally think about it, yeah. So, okay. Nothing invested. Like you said, just a bit of a different way to approach the round. And they're not going to find anything from it. OG are making sure that there's no... Okay, okay. <laughs> I was going to say no surprises, but... There's three people peeking you top side of the connector. So they do have a, a casualty, but they will realize that the B site is open. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, just as long as you don't walk into the to the stack, and I think OG were being fairly careful in that round. So that's not a... Well, Ugh. I say that as they're throwing grenades at themselves. Oh my god, he takes so much damage as well. It's going to have been a lot more expensive here for OG. I think it will be sort of mission accomplished here for C9 if they actually finish off this kill. Because you, you can only have so such high expectations coming in with USPs, but no yeah. problems. Oh. Yeah, another kill definitely would have been great. It's good to see Iza not continuing to fight after uh, taking all of that damage. A nice shot here at the beginning, but 3-1 to one favoring OG Cloud9. This is why we sometimes see the CT sides just spiral out of control if you lose this round, right? Yeah. Then you just then you're really in in some trouble. And I think especially because OG have, have gotten consecutive rounds where they've kind of mitigated casualties, they're they're gonna have a better position overall. Where I think Cloud9, it's more likely to end up scrappy. You're missing out on some utility. Woxic doesn't have armor. There's no kit. Oh, they're just gonna go quick, aren't they? That's interesting. I mean, they. they they're right in the sense that there aren't a ton of Molotovs to hold this down. Alex does have one of them, but it could be fun. They're actually down checking uh, underpass in the meantime, but it almost looked like they were going to go straight yeah. for the execute. And I think that might still end up being the play. I mean, we could see the bomb still hasn't moved. They're they're traversing through the underpass. And they're maybe just trying to force this rotation in through window. I like the idea here from Alexei because now he's in a position. He even has the opportunity to potentially flank through spawn. Nobody was covering that for Cloud9. Now Woxic moving into position. That timing window not being taken up, but this forward position from Alexei could still catch them out. It's so lethal, isn't it? Oh. He nearly gets caught, but the fact that he's still here is kind of an issue. If they win the B bomb site right now, what are those three players in A going to do? 
Even if they know he's low and all the rest of it, it's just no fun. Molotov deep back to the benches as they're gonna try and go for it, see if they can find their way in. 37 seconds here. Excellent kill to take down Ezer and a little bit more spray coming through. Alex, not quite the kill yet. Headshot from Mezzi, that is really important. It's NBK and Alexi left there at 14 and 15 health. They should not be winning this round and Alex doing his best to make sure they definitely don't here. A double kill already and they're gonna find a way through with three surviving members. That's not bad for Cloud9. They actually, I think, tactically were in such a powerful position there, OG. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you saw the stalemate between Woxic and Alexi. That was an idea that OG wanted to capitalize on, especially because Messi gets these two kills. I mean, yeah. off of short, he's able to stay alive for such a long period of time, and nobody really committed out for the trade. They allow Messi to reposition and, and take the engagements how he wants to. By that time, Cloud9 realized what's going on. They actually are able to trade an Alexi eventually. Right. There was nobody holding middle from Cloud9 at all in that round. Yeah. Which is... I mean, they made it out, but you wonder if OG just write that down, you jot that down on a piece of paper and think like, all right, no one middle, maybe we could do this again. And it's what made the fact that there was nobody holding CT spawn at all for yeah. when, when you're tripled up on, on the A site. That's going to end up coming back to, to bite Cloud9 if that is exploited later on for OG. Ooh, Molotov to cancel out the smoke. Perfect timing for Woxic to be doing that. Doesn't quite get it, but if they keep jumping, you might see a chance here and this misses the opportunity. And how quick are they going to be in there? Look at how fast window. he is. He's just straight in there, but Alex has got to kill as a tag is seconds oh away from God. looking over it. Alex, see, he's just charged this whole way. I don't think they know. If he gets the kill on one of them here, that could collapse the round. He's just jumped, just straight parkour through the window. Oh he's going to line up. Big kill. He does get taken down, but surely they could find Messi now. Valda trying to chase him down. Messi, he's just in a full-on panic at this point in time. Valda gets taken down, and I can't believe Messi's still alive on this bomb site. He's even going to get a kill on Issa, and just like that, they end up turning it and winning it. I mean, what more do you want out of a round if you're uh, OG? Alexi, he'd, he'd line that up for them. Yeah, I I don't understand how they've gone into, into two crazy advantageous positions on this, on this T side. Yes. And they've had both of them gone against them. Like, this this is the type of scenario that, even if we say Cloud9, you know, they've had limited time to prepare, this is something that you wouldn't prepare for, I think, in most circumstances. I mean, you'd maybe have somebody holding CT spawn, but... Or, or fighting a bit more aggressively through window. That was the perfect timing for Alexi to take. Yeah. And they still don't win the round. That is... That is absurd. Listen, credit to uh, Messi for the last couple of rounds, because usually... Being a B-side player on this map is just pure hell, isn't it? Mm. Um, and he's not had an easy time at all, but he's, he's found a way to get some double kills in, in some very, very important rounds. It's not uncommon that we see that the B players on this map have really no kills for the most of it, and you know, like they're just part of retaking A when it's too late, you know? Yeah, I think Henry, G Henry G um, had said this in the interview um, that I think Freya might have put up before on, on the Flashpoint YouTube. I think they did, yeah. Um, just saying how, how safe a pair of hands Messi is. And I think that's the, the opinion of, of many when it came to him being picked up for this roster. Oh, but, oh okay. They may not be able to see him in action. A quick collapse towards the A side. Woxic's doing a good job with the rifle, though. And at distance, he won't be taking any damage. See, easy clean kills for him. He's already had one ace. Don't give him another one. Alexi swinging for the middle. Uh, he should have maybe been dead already, but he's going to be going back in. Oh my goodness. Alexi is just having a grand old time. He's been jumping up and down all over the place. Being able to do that jump just effortlessly in the middle of the chaos, I mean, that's... That's really cool. I, mean, I just think it's, 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 weirdly, it's weird that he's seeming so free. You know, he's... Just loving life. Yeah, absolutely. Three to four, though. What a, what a good recovery for Cloud9 here after after having that strange beginning. They've just won three in a row. There's been no bomb plants either in any of those three rounds. So they're denying a bit of the economy. Let's see what OG could do now that they have some rifles picked up once again. And, well, that's a good start. That's a tag actually going down right away. After so many rounds where they've pressured this B bomb site. Now setting into a more standardized default. Cloud9 do get caught out on the extremities. Alex, though, 
looking for the angle, the flash. Oh, it's perfect. Alexi can find the entry and take some space towards B. They actually began a rotation over towards A because S attack had fallen. So this is an open B bomb site for OG, and this time I don't think there's any surprises. And they're not even going to go. They're just immediately going to call the save, in which, in which case, Isa's position is suddenly very cool. Yeah. That is... Make one step, and you you are a goner here on the save. Yes. I really enjoyed the fact that he called in that flashbang from a teammate over there, Alexi B. That was... Because the, the grenade landed, it did so much damage, but then mm. he just said, yeah, fine. I'll just... I'll get one teammate to help, and you're done. It's pretty cool. It is... A little surprising that OG have put so much emphasis, I think, on this on this B bomb site. I think it's kind of one or the other. I've I've noticed of late where you just feel like you have to go so a heavy, especially if you're going for some early mid control. But I mean, we've seen that neither team has really been putting too much of a focus on mid. I think OG primarily have done it in rounds where they feel like they have the advantage anyway. Yeah, I mean, and. I know there are some teams that just really don't like f taking mid on the CT side for this map, or even even attempting it, right? Um, so maybe Cloud9 haven't figured out any protocols they and enjoy like the for the best it. way to do it just yet with the players they have? Yeah. Mm. I mean, it, it can really get, you know, go out of control a little bit, can't it? I know... I know in past teams, Valde really enjoys playing the, you know, the connector and, and shooting over those smokes and playing around that in, the, in that mm -hmm. connector towards the, the A-bomb site. So I'm sure he'll be doing that. But if they don't have anyone on the Cloud9 side currently that that sort of enjoy that to the similar level, it's hard to push people into it. And yeah, again, just, yeah, Woxic's showing up a bit. He's got Alex over there with the org, but they're not really, they're not, they're not insisting on it, right? A couple of smokes here and they'll have to sort of, you know, forget about the mid control. That's a, that's a a bit of a luxury maybe for OG to be able to take this round sort of you know assuming that it keeps going this way just say all right we we got middle and I think what hurts the most for Cloud9 is that they tried to do a bit more of a proactive approach last round and they got instantly punished for it yeah so now it is passive setups once again middle is going to be free I think it's the maybe the third round that OG have gone in this direction, but the A site is their main focus. These smokes as well are going to prevent them from really capitalizing on the spacing, and they have this rotation down. There's even the potential for them to think about wrapping towards that B bomb site, but definitely the less considered one. S attack, distance fight, NBK and Issa both finding the kills they need to, and Woxic, while he's here on time, the Flash, they doubling up towards spawn. They, they're in a position where they can fight for this, but now with Alex gone, Woxic is going to be really hard-pressed to save, and Mantu's just going to deny it. Wow. That was... It's almost a perfect illustration of what the danger is of giving up mid. Because three men in connector get flashed through. There's Mantu throwing the flashbang over the whole wall, and just they just push through the smoke. Once they're there, you can see how isolated uh, was it S attack was on the on the sh mm -hmm. in shadow. You even saw some some shots ringing out from the AK, and they just I mean that box that's right there on the corner when you're playing like the box towards the ramp. People don't I don't people think often about this, but it's empty inside. There's just air inside. All it is is like you know four really thin wooden plates. You can shoot through that with a Glock and penetrate all of it. So even like even a pistol round, if you shoot through it, it does so much damage. Um, it is. I don't know. It's If they change that to make it solid, I'm not saying they should, but if yeah. they did, that position immediately becomes completely different. Well, just in general, you get spammed so often under Valk anyway, yeah. right? So uh, I think it's a, it's a really troublesome position to be in for the setup that Cloud9 had. And I think uh, it was Maui that was sort of pointing it out on the, on the desk. He had a hypothetical about where Mezu would be positioned. We've seen him over being that B-side anchor where... Yes. I think that has kind of shifted roles up slightly. It could be. I mean, he's been doing a, a great job, I think, over yeah. there. So, so, you know, you could have made an argument from, from Maui's case to say, well, maybe if he was middle, it was been a bit better, but you can't have him everywhere. So, yeah. so what are you meant to do here? Pistols back in the hands of Cloud9 as well. Yeah, not going to be able to get too much. I think, what was that the old quote from, from Tarek? So if somebody sort of leaked the idea that it's like, oh yeah, he wants his config set up on everybody's PC. So when he dies, you know, he could just go on over. Just Got five tarics. The next guy. Yeah. Oh man. I wonder is that is that allowed? Are there, I don't think any tournament has even thought about that. Well, I mean, I don't think you're allowed another person to play under your alias. Oh, so maybe that's uh. Yeah. That's already a rule. Yeah. What if they just all 
call themselves Messi? What if they all call themselves Messi? It's like, oh, yes, yeah, so yeah. we find him five times. Then yep, it's he's he's walking with the right click. Yeah, it's all good. You couldn't even you couldn't even potentially have somebody else impersonating him because his config is just so weird. It's just it has to be him. We did, there was some there was some discussion recently about who was it that was playing with inverted audio? Was that um, oh Amanek or something? I think someone said. Yeah. I never found out if that's actually true or not, but um, that sounds to me like a giant mess. <laughs> Heads on backwards. I know, like, what's going on? I know some people play with inverted, uh, like, mouse, which in itself mm. feels like hell, but... Yeah, I feel like I'm constantly in a flying simulator or something. Exactly, like, it's... Pull up, pull up! Listen, they need to do that on, on Cloud9. They, they are about to crash into the ground. I think there might be some uh, some lag or something going on, so I think they're yep. going to try and reset the whole thing and, uh, and, and get back into it. Luckily, no one had taken any damage or anything, so... Kind of a good time, I guess, for that to happen without any uh, any real issue there. But yeah, six to four favoring OG is definitely as a start on the T side of Mirage, pretty solid at the moment. Yeah, and it's it's a half that could have been so much more successful when you contextualize how Cloud9 got their first few after the pistol. Right. Like you had such great positions for OG. It's it's actually actually kind of a miracle that Cloud9 have got to to this scoreline. Yeah, so it's grim to think about when you put it like that, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure that one of the things that, like one of the luxury positions they'd love to be in is going into something like, a, you know, potentially like a double orb or something, like if they could really start to take that fight. But they just haven't had the money at all to even dream of something like that. Yeah. And I, I know Bezzy's not, not shy of taking the AWP. Uh, I mean, you could put it in Alex's hands as well. I think there's a few sort of safe pairs yeah. if you're going for a secondary. We talked about the, the versatility for Cloud9 and just the, the idea of even having hard rolls is a bit peculiar in, in some regards just because you, it could just be anybody. I mean, I could I would trust Mezzi on an entry. I would I'll yeah. trust Floppy on one too, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it, I and that's... Oh, Alexi's like chowing down. Oh, no. He's, he's just having some food. I mean, a little break. Some brain food. I guess that's needed. What was he eating? I didn't even know. I, I, I don't know. I think it was off camera. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, now is the time for it. Could I mean, it is right now it's looking like maybe a second map victory, maybe for mm -hmm. them here. But it's already been stretching a while now with the double OT that was happening in the first map. Man, is there any immediate change? We talked about middle and how they're not really contesting that at the moment, Cloud9. Is that the most obvious? I don't want to call it a fix because there's no guarantee that it'll actually work. Yeah. But um, I, I, I mean, we haven't really seen too much of the of the CT side. We've seen Mezzi get aggro in, into the apartments a couple of rounds. Which we really liked. Yeah, and and maybe the, the same idea has to kind of spur on, you know, that, that deep Astralis smoke towards top mid or maybe setting up for a flash play. But I, at the same time, would anticipate that OG will be thinking about that because middle has been a little bit of a problem area because they're just giving it up so often. Yeah. Well, I'm already seeing Woxic diving straight down with an AWP pushing all the way through, not seeing anyone. This is a cool play. Again, you know, you miss a shot down here and you're probably going to die. But you have to admire the fact that he's ready to try and take this fight on behalf of his team. They line up oh. for us at tag. That was meant to be a flashbang to take him out, but it doesn't really work out that way. Now Woxic is coming through. I love how bold oh. he is with this play. S attack finding a third kill. And finally they bring him down, but they're not even going to know about Woxic. Well, now they do, but it is all too late. What a cool play from the middle. And Valda swinging right in and... Not getting anything done, unfortunately. Yeah, S attack lining them up and then actually moving past the smoke like that, they had no idea. Really impressive stuff from him and, and pushing a boundary that maybe some would back away from. You know, you've accomplished your goal. Try and escape while you can because typically they'll double up for, for those trade frags. Yeah, just kept going. Yeah, and, and then Woxic just kind of emerges through a smoke, just like, oh, what's going on over here? How can I help? That's uh, so interesting. All right, Alex, this time, the one to jump down. He's got some backup with Woxic behind him. The bomb, though, is over at the ramp, and it looks like they're just going to, again, try and sort of walk through underpass, I'm assuming connect with this A squad, and then eventually go for it. But there's some there's some steps in the way before they get there, though, especially this double setup at the ramp. Yeah, Alex clears top mid. So that's the second time now we've seen coming out of that lengthy pause that Clown 9 have gone for this, but Alex gives up his position. They're very prepared for what OG have to offer here. Three players committed towards this A site, actually forcing the issue. Alexi caught out. 
not able to spot the bomb, so may actually just indicate a bit of a lurk, and Issa and Valde begin their conquest. They begin their traversal of the connector, and they're not going to be prepared, Cloud9. As the tag goes down, Floppy with a very important kill. He's going to win that fight too. That is his fourth kill here, so he's been lacking a bit behind, but absolutely trying to make up for it now. Man 2 you know, one versus four, and he's going to get found by Alex. I don't know, because we weren't seeing him. I don't know how many. If Alex saw both of them coming out from from that uh, underpass, then that would make it so much more genius for them to flash their way onto the ramp at that point in time, because that is just a classic setup, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, like two middle, three, three A ramp. So, so if you go for that, I mean, I don't, he was forced off there, but I don't know if he saw anyone or not, but either way, that's uh, that would have made it really interesting. Like a cause and effect, yeah. immediate response. Yeah, because yeah, Alex is super, if, if Alex sees that, I'm sure he's gonna think like, all right, well, they're coming under pass now, like just now is the time to check the ramp. And they already had two people there, so. Yeah, it was the perfect timing for it. Yeah. That's interesting. Intuition, if not called for. Yeah, we'll have to go back and look and, and find out which one was uh, was the dominant one there. Back to middle and back to the more sort of common setup, maybe as the tag just taking a, a, a little bit of a, of a spot there. I'm not going to try and hold it too hard. He takes a lot of damage from that. Yeah, OG not throwing anything crazy at this position either this time. Again, like you said, back to sort of more a, a usual setup here for Cloud9. They've gone with that proactive approach. Now they let OG operate. S attacks on the other side of the smoke. They are waiting for it to come through. And at the flash, the smoke fades. And S attack, he lines up the spray transfer, but it's not going to be enough. The entry is found by Alexi B once again. We saw this on Nuke, and it's transferred over beautifully to the second map. Alex and Mezzi, do you even really commit to this? Alex is taking tags on the fights, and while well, the Molotov lands at the feet of Mantu. I, th I think Alex is still trying for this. They've actually rotated in, but now Alex is gone. Mezzi trying to save the AWP. What a great round from Alexi. Yeah, I mean, I was ready to call it when S-Attack got those. That double spray down just looked... The fact that they walked behind him and they weren't even looking. I don't even know if they were... If even the people getting killed were able to call that out. It's so hard to do when you're like, where am I even getting shot from at this point in time? And yeah. then Alexi just comes in. He's 13 and 5. I mean, one of the win conditions you were mentioning earlier, which I think is totally reasonable that Cloud9 could have a, a better chance here, is that surely LXCB can't just keep playing well throughout. Double OT, like, you know, it's all the rounds on Nuke and then some. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. Uh, he kept up the same pace pretty much throughout the entire game. And, well, he comes out swinging again. I, what has this man been eating for breakfast? What's he having for his dinner? Because now I'm, now I'm very interested. Like we're gonna we're gonna need to know. It's a dietary plan, the whole thing. Yes, maybe that's why it's off camera as well. Yeah, like that's the that's, that's the secret the real secret that we're not gonna give you, away. You have the trade off of losing track of time, but you know we take that sometimes. That's fine. Listen, if you can play playing like this, it's all right. Oh. Waxic, Alexi, you're just hyping him up, but he does get straight sniped through the smoke at top mid. And they're going to go and check and see no one else there. Now, they're going to execute while there are three people in middle. So that could be cool here for them. If they can get the bomb plant down, it might be worth, at least in terms of OG, putting some pressure back onto Cloud9. But S attack finding that one. And it's just a blind shot there. But it looks like they found the formula here for Cloud9 to pick up a seventh round. So that would tie it all up. And if they deny the bomb plant, there's still going to be somebody to work Ooh. with, I think. That's a nice spray. But there's a flank coming in from Alex. And that should be the ace up the sleeve, shouldn't it? Should be an absolute sitter of a kill, but Valde equalizing once again. There's that surprise factor. The unseen element. Alex springs in, but Valde brings it to the one-on-one. -on -one. 37 HP, and oh, Alex, he jumped down, and Valde heard every single step. OG, get Valde in the best performance ever in the round. He gets the ace for OG. That's so ridiculous. I can't even believe it. I don't understand. I mean... Listen, the, the part where he smokes and sort of falls down for the smoke and hides in it, that all looks like such a cool move, but, but Valde just knows everything. He just straight blew up Cloud9. And it's something that we, we saw in Cloud9's last game. We had two 2v4s that they lost. Yes. Now we've got a third here at Flashpoint. I mean, it's heartbreaking in a way, but what a time for Valde to come alive. Five out of the nine kills that he has was in that last round. <laughs> so, oh dear, that was 
That was won by Cloud9 already. That was that was a round that was over, and Valdi just says, absolutely not. Floppy's going to be going down as a tag next in line. Three versus four. Two of them are on the bomb site here, but there's just so many people from OG on the other side. All Ooh. right, Woxic. Can we do it again? He's certainly trying. Alex is helping out. He's just swinging all over the place to try and get oh. this, even tagging up NBK. Man, Woxic is such a fun player to watch. Yeah, these two players are now subject to a bit more lethality from the pistols. And you can see they're a bit concerned. Where has Alex gone? Where is Mezzi? Unsure. At least they have some time, I guess. OG. Yeah. We know they're not shy of bleeding a few seconds here or there. Yeah, in their minds, they're thinking, man, it's hours until we do something. <laughs> it's fine. But this position, how would you ever check this if, if you're coming in from the OG side? How would you ever do that? Yeah, they have to start running. Alex saying, thanks. <laughs> 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 Styling on them. What a way to end the half. That's beautiful. 8-7 in favor of OG. But Cloud9 hanging in there. It's not done yet. They still have a second half to play here. See if they could do something to bring us onto the third one. Would be on Inferno. That'd be very, very cool. It's going to be coming up, uh, though, that second half first after the break. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Right, 8-7 at the end of the half here on the second map. OG with a slight lead going into the TT side, though. That should be setting them up pretty nicely. And Alexi B continuing his reign of terror in this best of three. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, not quite as crazy, but still having some really high impact rounds, I think, is what we'll, the main takeaway is. Yeah. And you, you said hanging in there when you, we were brought to the half for Cloud9. They are certainly just hanging in there. See if they can equalize, take the pistol round. Oh, that is sharp from Issa. 
Shutting the player out from the air and Valde trying to get something more. But Cloud9, they've sort of recovered the situation. Woxic in with two kills. A flash on S-Attack could buy them enough room, but okay, it's getting messy. Mantu's got a secondary kill, but Woxic still alive and kicking. This would have to be another ace clutch to add to the tally for this series alone. And Woxic is making this possible. The chances are there, but NBK finally shuts it out. A pistol won by OG. Wow, his movement was great though at the end. You saw, you see how he tries to limit his exposure from CT spawn by, by sort of mm -hmm. hugging that wall and falling back behind. He did everything right that he had to. He just, you know, had the Glock and couldn't land that headshot. But this is what a smackdown. Sit down, son. That was, he just absolutely <laughs> ruined his day. And that's one of those spots as well where you see that those first two kills, they're so clean, you just think he's gonna keep going yeah, and yeah. find more. But it's also, I mean, from Easter's point of view, it's one of those spots where if he misses, like, the first two shots, he's probably dead. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it really feels like all or nothing when, they are, when they're that far in. All right. Well, not the start that Cloud9 were looking for. Not even the bomb plant. So going for Deagles and an AK on S-Attack. Interesting. The more curious thing for Cloud9 is going to be how this T-side operates. We saw how they maybe didn't meet expectations or predictions coming into the CT side. But these roles were very clearly defined. How they wanted to, to approach these these acquisitions. They they fulfill a purpose. And so how much we'll get to see of that may of course still remain to be seen. Alex lurking out towards A though. Right, a little bit of damage, but yeah he got caught there. Would have been, again, I mean, we saw a little bit from Alexi B in that window when they were on the T side, how much it matters when you get the right timing and just sort of sneak in. So hard to blame Alex for trying. Flash through as a tag, not seeing anyone, but there is that MP9. It's going to take down Valda. That's a really strong kill, and it opens up a lot towards this bomb site. The bomb is up in the A apartments, and now it's getting a little bit weird. Yeah, they're getting, they're getting sidetracked, I think, in the middle of this. Would have been amazing if they could have sandwiched Ether in there, which is what looked like it was going to happen, but... Suddenly they lose the mid fight, and now I'm not so sure anymore. 20 seconds here. Oh. Yeah, Walks it could maybe find the kill. That's that's gonna be good, but the problem is still easier on the bomb site, and Messi has to make, uh, make no mistakes. Yeah. Otherwise, the round is over. It's it's a cool attempt, and it again it looked like they almost had it. Not gonna be any chance now. So a tenth round for OG. Well, uh, I guess they could. Try. Yeah, I guess they could try it again. They get the AK once more. Oh. I just feel like you might be digging yourself into a hole if you commit around this, but... Yeah. Okay, more con I think more conservative approach. They'll just get the armor. Doing it on Alex as well, so the fact that he has less money, I think, has fewer implications. You don't want to hinder players like Esetag or Woxic. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. He's going to just get that armor in there. No head armor, so I mean, a, a bunch of these guns are going to be hard for him to deal with if it if it goes a bit south. Look at the push to top mid. Woxic not really connecting, but he did a spot a couple of people there. And OG, yeah, good round for them to be a bit forceful and just make sure that Cloud9 don't feel comfortable anywhere. They got four flashbangs and a smoke, so yeah. B, I mean, it, it's almost like they're pushed in towards the B bomb site right now. Yeah. I wonder if the reason Woxic was the one holding with the Deeg as well is so they can farm up some cash. Right. That'd be part of the idea. But OG are in a great position to try and deal with this. Alexi can be first contact and Valde can swing from the low ground. So Alexi taking the fight. Valde swinging for it, but not getting anything done. The P250 of Mezzi does find the kill. The weapon could be recovered. It is a fair distance away, but Alexi does make an exit. So still alive and kicking. Cloud9 are weakened. Like you said earlier, they do feel slightly boxed in towards this B site, and NBK is going to try and take advantage of some space. Yeah, just spotting it out. Smoke up in front. I mean, again, they could try and pop flash this, you know, cl close to NBK, but that'll also immediately signal what's coming, and uh, with low time, so you're, you, you've got some, some rough choices. The bomb is over here. Are they going to just try and fake this? If they get NBK and everyone rotates, we're in for a wild ride here. He's no, he's gonna stand tall. So whatever the plan was, it's gonna get tricky. One shot there, but Alex is already low on health. And around the corner, Isa. Yeah, that's a that's a fight he wins every single time. I still think this is actually a very very cool approach. They just needed NBK. 
Yeah, uh, getting that kill is so crucial because it leaves OG in a position where they don't have much information towards B. He but it's just die. it's just another position where yeah, you you don't die at the end of the round. I actually thought that Alex was going to sort of reposition, give the AK over to S attack because he was low. Like yeah. I, I understand Alex had ar had armor, but when you're 27 HP, that armor is not gonna really matter. Right. Yeah. No, it doesn't help you that much. Oh, that is. I, I, I just. Why not? Yeah, they they he, he couldn't take a fight. Like he didn't have a fight to take at the end. But this is really bad. That they've had now two rounds in the last three where somebody is saved, and as a result has no money. So Esotag's just on the deagle. He's been super neutered. Yeah, you're definitely right. OG have really almost no money to work with. Look at this aggression. Ooh. Alexi B must have had a hard attack then. That's a very similar place to the one that he was making. Valda catching them as they come back though. So that does make up for it a, a bit at least. Mezzi wants to go for the fight and Valda oh. so confident. And now they have to go straight out of the B of our hallways here. NBK will take one quickly and backup is being called for three versus two. And it will be, oh no, maybe not. It's gonna say a quick bomb plant here, but Valda actually just continuing. He can't be stopped. Well, the only man who didn't have a gun coming into this round. Only the Deeg, no armor, no utility at all, push, pushed into this 1v3. And Valde's taking that high ground. They're waiting for him to activate, be that first point of contact for OG as he is low, and that should give up the angle. Oh dear. Esatag just turning away as Valde peaks, and OG, they sweep up another. 12 rounds on now with the CT side, and they've come out swinging fantastically. Five in a row. Or... Four in a row, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good start for them, isn't it, at this point in time here. They've really, uh, I mean, as you said, you said it earlier, two of those rounds just running out of time. And then, I mean, one of them was, was quite deliberate where they saved the AK, but I mean, it, it's still a bit of an issue going into the yeah. 20th round. And now it's a, a bit of money being built on OGs, not a lot. I, I think that's the only silver lining right now for Cloud9 is the fact that the CT design hasn't just, you know, in the four rounds, they haven't just built a giant economy, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Really meaty nade. Chonky stuff. Yeah, you, he really wanted to go through there. Changed his mind it, quickly. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy that we're seeing Alex take up these more entry pathways as well. He's been very aggressive in some of these positions. Oh, and Mantu. He pushed towards the underpass. Floppy not quite prepared. Esatag, well, he'll be able to contain him. The smoke does give the chance to escape. And peeking into the AWP will be very dangerous. They have Mantu completely cut off, but they still haven't flushed him out. They lose Esatag while Alex is busy doing that. And Cloud9, once again, may just feel like they have no control elsewhere. Alex trying to entry and find a pathway towards this B site, but there's a player right underneath, and NBK wins a crucial duel. He was just listening to that the whole time, MBK. You could just see him rubbing his hands. Yeah, he was so ready for it. Walks are going to be found as well. Mezzi, one versus three here. And OG, I mean, this is such a critical round in terms of, again, building the economy and keeping Cloud9 away from anything sustainable. Ryan, I, the round loss one is going to be there, but without a bomb plant, it still just actually won't be quite enough. So if he could somehow get the I think the bomb is down in the underpass, so yeah. it'll, it'll take forever to get there. It'll never happen. Wow. Disastrous of a performance thus far. Not getting the the sort of return on investment that they were hoping for. And, and the fact that, I mean, we touched on it a couple of times already, but they've never, they haven't had the most stable buying pattern thus far yeah. on this T side has only made things that much worse. They even had that opportunity, the, that same one that we kept talking about with Alexi towards the window, where Alex had found the entry, and then they just aren't able to capitalize off that space. We had Valde stepping up massively, and I think Valde has been a critical part so far for OG. He has shut down some of these progressions that Cloud9 are trying to bring to the table in this T side. And of course the yeah. ace, that, that certainly helps. The ace really picked him up, didn't it? He was yeah. feeling feel, feeling good after that. He's he's such an incredibly versatile player that he, I think he'll just always be a resource on, on almost any team. So Iza goes down. That's not a bad start here. Floppy picking up the kill. And Alexi will take at least one for the smoke. Valder this time the victim of, of something similar. Bomb. Oh no, oh. it's going to get denied. Last possible second has to have been. 
And that's an issue. Oh, Mantu does have the idea that someone's pushed spawn, and Alexi in the meanwhile has found a kill himself. So, Mezzi, trapped behind the boxes. Does have the bomb on his back, and with the flash, might be able to get it down, but no. Mantu recovers in time. Still yet to register around on this T side, and OG are within touching distance of 2 0 the series. I think at this point, the next Photoshop has to be similar, just in a bathtub, just filled. <laughs> doesn't get worse, does it? I say that obviously laughing, but I did also pick Cloud9, it's just for me to. Yeah, you know, you have less risk associated. Slightly less. Yeah. You, you've had a taste of the bottom though. Like you, you've, we, we, I think I was I along there with you. So, a bunch of us have been, have been, have been down there. We've made the comeback. Yeah, randomly. It's, it's amazing how that works, isn't it? And we'll have to see if Cloud Nine make a similar comeback. Pressed up against the wall, where they haven't had a win here in Flashpoint yet, not even a map, and they potentially may not get this one either. As OG are in the prime position to do so. Not checking top mid. Okay, interesting decision. But Alexi there to quickly trade. It's the double up for OG. Oh, Waxy. I mean, this is so dangerous. That smoke behind him is all that he has for backup at the moment. Alexi, I think they must have seen the gun barrel, but he will fall back, so... A minute on the clock as Floppy will take down Iza. Leaving just alone on the bomb site. Man two with an AWP and a CC. I mean, he's actually going to go for the CC. Oh, this can work. Floppy's right there. Oh, but oh. He, he engages Woxic first. I thought maybe he could have swung for it. This could be a real chance here for Cloud9 to finally pick up a round on the T side. Yeah, Woxic finding another with the AWP and NBK behind a Molotov. A one on four. We've seen some crazy individual performances. There have been so many rounds here for OG. Ninja but like you. <laughs> That would, be, that would be the only thing that could make this that much worse. I know. Just everyone crush your fingers or something, whatever it is. Just to try and try and will it into existence. All they need is for S attack to run out of connector and, and then the rest just say, all right, go look for him. Don't let him have the AK or whatever it is. They're playing it really disciplined, so credit to Cloud9 for doing that. But this is the sort of situation where, you, you know, you could sort of lose your mind a bit, right? Because you're suddenly really far behind and everyone's probably feeling... Slightly defeated at the moment. Mm -hmm. All that pressure that's mounted. Right. Woxic is still, I mean, in spite of how dreadful this map has been for Cloud9 and so far, Woxic is collecting 20 kills. That's actually really great. He's tied with Alexi B. I don't even know how that's really possible. Yeah, Alexi, I think, has slowed down the second half in spite of them winning so many rounds, but Woxic has been contributing pretty heavily. Although, if you, didn't f if you didn't compare the rest, right, Alexi at 20, then you've got the rest at 15 or 14 on OG. Mm -hmm. Whereas right now, Floppy and Mezzi are yeah. definitely having a bit of a rough time on Cloud9. So, And these are the two players that have probably the most to prove on this, this roster. They haven't had the, the proper taste of Tier 1. Yeah. The, the whole previous Cloud9 roster seemed to be very specialized in specific maps and you had some good performances on, on players like Floppy and, and say OC in that regard. And that is true. The fact that they are I'll say the the least paid, I suppose as well, leads into that expectation of well, how well will you really do? And I, I, I think I think the, the when you even suggested the ninja defuse, I had to sort of scoff like you wouldn't do that to my boy Mezzi. Don't do it. But it's it. This is a critical moment where you need to see the that sort of culminate on this Cloud9 side. We had Woxie getting a couple of critical kills in the past round just to make it even feasible. Yeah, those those really were important. I mean, I I don't know. Like, it's I'm willing to give Messi maybe a little bit more rope again because he was playing that B bomb side. And he was doing really well as long as they kept sort of coming yeah. there. He was he was he was doing fine. But once that was gone. Well, oh, oh Valdi is right there. He's going to be checked. Walks it continuing. Isa, though, good headshots. Had a chance for a third as well. Should be fine, though. Three versus two with the weapons and everything else. I think they're going to be all right. So looking like a ninth round at the moment here for Cloud9. But a moment of real terror there at the middle if they hadn't checked. Yeah, and um, are OG letting off the gas a little bit? Are they talking? you got to hope so, right? I mean, his teammate's stuck behind the boxes. He has zero thought, zero fear that the connector could be open. 
And you look at the minimap, right? If you're him, you see his teammates look in that direction, but yeah. his head's down and just looking at nothing. Just, I mean, maybe it's worth a sacrifice, right? If if it works out. <laughs> yeah, you've got a rifle. You're the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> yeah, that's maybe the part that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Man two, yeah, just escaping over on this side. 14 to nine. Such a long road back. They need to win the next seven rounds in a row, unless they want to end up in some sort of overtime scenario again, which fair play if they if they go there. And we saw a bit of a comeback from OG as well on Nuke. Cloud9 were in a position where they could have taken it over the line. But instead, we ended up with that double overtime. Yeah, this that was wild. This feels like a, a harder sell because it was so back and forth at the start, right? Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. You're right. The second half of Nuke was just all Yeah, it was, it was all over the place. Yeah, I, I, I'm tempted to agree again. I mean, the big the big, really cool thing that's happening for Cloud9 is obviously that OG's economy is so broken. It's now starting to pick it up. I mean, next round will be really good for them. But um, so, th so they've had a couple of free, more or less free runs yeah. here where they could sort of build something. But at 14-10, I mean, could be done. This is where you'd be interested. Remember that uh, crazy play from Alex on Newt where he snuck in through yeah. hell and just walked up behind? Wonder if they got anything, I mean, maybe not of a similar caliber, but there are some fun tricks you can do on, uh, on I think, on just on all maps where you say, okay, it's not going to be a sustainable strategy to do it, you know, consistently throughout, you know, 15 rounds in a row on the T side or whatever, but, you know, maybe you have... They did it once here where they, you know, again, they did a quick boost into middle and just yeah. went for the play. Have you got, like... Okay, because... After this, they still need another six rounds, but all those six rounds are obviously not going to be buy rounds for OG. So you just need some of those tricks. Like, two or three would do it right now. You do them in the round where they have the rifles, and then that's your ticket home, right? So be interested to see if um, if they have anything cool like that, or if they are just going to rely on their their sort of base play here and, and, and hope that they can win it back that way. Yeah, I, I wonder as well. Uh, in that same vein, right? The the amount of preparation time. I know that they don't want to use that as an excuse, but do you have time to then prepare for these set plays or yeah. these, these niche rounds that, I mean, but seven I mean, maps in the pool? Both of them have almost always... It's been Alex saying, I'll do it. Like, I'll walk around, you, right? So yeah. so maybe they, he just needs someone to say, okay, well, just throw this smoke and boost me here or do something in the... Yeah, we'll do my role yeah. because they should all should be on the same page in that regard. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see... All right, showing up in middle is Alexi B for the minute, but he's just going to be jumping right in and taking the uh, slightly longer way around, which is fair enough. And a pretty default spread, except for Woxic, who is a little bit further forward. No one jumping to try and look, though. Still waiting it out, the smoke. Going to deny the chance. That may be NBK's prompt to get up onto the apartments. Get a little bit closer to the action. No aggression from uh, OG. Like, we were talking about Mezzi pushing and stuff like that. They, they've been real quiet in this round, at least. They're quite far back from the middle as well. Yeah, bleeding out a lot more time in that regard. Not like spending really much utility on either side. Nobody looking for that information early on. Late boost here from OG, though. Cloud9 are postured outside of the connector. Oh, the timing on this is perfect. Alexi able to capitalize on the fact. And although Mezzi was actually somewhat prepared, still a one for nothing. OG figuring out what the idea may be here for Cloud9, but they actually haven't started to move resources over towards that A site. And Cloud9 are actually doubling back again. Oh, I'm very much doubting if this is going to be working out. I don't know about this, Michael. It's, it's 25 seconds. They're starting to get back there. Oh. Mantu gets the kill on Alex, and now the three of them are just running through the hallway here to try and see if they can get it. One kill for MBK is actually plenty enough, I think, for this to work out, and they'll be cleaned up. Alex CB with two good kills. He's up at 22 overall, and it is series point now for OG. Cloud9 need the next five in a row. Has to be flawless, has to be no mistakes yeah. of any kind. Just, just highlighting something in that last round, Mantu getting that kill from so far away when Alex is in that position. Yeah. Valde's performing the fast flank. Does he actually hear the steps in time before he dies? Because, I mean, it, it, it didn't really matter, but even still, that, that comes down to some niche timings where Cloud9 seemed to have a plan, it just doesn't work <laughs> out. Fantastic opening from Esatag, but will it be enough to keep them in this game? They'll start a man up. A five on four. These are typically 
where most teams convert their rounds after the fact. I love that play when you get that spawn. And what I also love doing with it, if you can't even afford the orb, is just buy the deagle and run up the ramp. Because sometimes you can't yeah. Alex tried to sort of try to do it when he got grenaded with an AK, right? But and then he was immediately just, yeah, I'm out of here. But there is something fun about that timing because mm -hmm. you can't you can really catch people off guard in uh, in the right moment there. Four on five here, and they are pulling back from the A bomb site, maybe a little bit, sort of saying, you know what, let's chance it. This would be a a very annoying way to win the map, wouldn't it? If you just sort of s stack the B bomb site and they come. Well, that may be exactly what happens. Mantu peeking in with the AWP, S attack gone. Equal in the affair right now. And OG, again, they have the additional resources here. Mantu finding one more, but traded out. And NBK committed to a close position. It's Issa instead. NBK not yet activated. And time is beginning to be a little bit of a problem here for Cloud9. A two on three with Woxic and Mezzi. And they found a pathway in. Woxic making that rotation towards that A site. He holds the line, but Alexi's cheated pass. Does Woxic know that that's a possibility? The answer, no. Mezzi, a one on three. This would have to be phenomenal from him to step up in the moment to keep Cloud9 in it. And I don't know that he has the chance. 15 seconds, get to the site because Issa is on his path. And well, this might just be it. Issa is too close. Alexi chasing him down and OG take the second map 16 to 10. Oh man, it looked like maybe they had a bit of a window there, but in the end, it could only have been fitting that it was like to pick up the last kill, but I think it was 24 or something overall. Really, I mean, what a best of three. It's two maps, and he just drops so many kills for his team. So no, no chance there for Cloud9. I mean, that's that's it's so rough, isn't it? Um, no yeah. maps being won, but double overtime on new. This 16-14 in the first series in yeah. their opening group as well. And this one actually, I mean, once they got a little bit alive into it here, it actually looked like they were, were ready to make their way back. So, I don't know. I don't think it's completely desperate and hopeless here if you look at how they've been playing. Um, so, yeah, I'm still going to be quite excited to see them play in the future um, and sort of see everyone really, you know, find their roles within the team and figure out what to do. Yeah, I think the good signs are definitely that they seem to work well in these chaotic situations. You can just work off of the experience of the players in that regard. Like yeah. we saw how awkward their CT side start was and they still found some rounds off the off the back of it. But even still, you can tell that there is some deeper stuff that needs to be worked on. The fact that they're getting flanked. The, I mean, the fact that they're finding flanks. There's yeah. some. There's a bit of push and pull. It's like they've, they're sort of creating a character in a, in a sports game where you have to. You have only so many points committed to so many yeah, different things. That's like true. They're, they're like they're attack and defense, but like, oh no, I'm, I'm suddenly weak in one area. Yeah. So there's, there's room to grow. I, I think that's it's fair to say. But it's going to be broken down for us by, the, uh, by everybody, our analysts over at the blind spot.